Hey everybody out there in YouTube Nation, Mark Patterson here. I'm going to do a quick tip, as quick as I can, on the Ocean Division. Lures, tips, stuff like that. I'll run through it as quick as I can. It's kind of a lot to cover, but I'll be as brief as I can. Anyway, so I try to travel as light as I can. 90% of my lures I just keep in this one little pouch bag type deal. Uh, it weighs about 4 pounds, maybe 5 pounds. The reason I don't bring a bunch of stuff, number one, it's a bunch of stuff. Should I turtle coming in or lose stuff? I just want to try to keep it as clean as I can. Number two is weight. I already have a bait tank back there that if I put 10 gallons of water in it, plus the battery, it's going to weigh about 100 pounds. So I don't need to be paddling or pedaling around any more weight than I need. So just a quick bag. The way I do it is I, no hooks going, no hooks going out, coming back. I just have swivels, snap swivels on all my rods. Then I can quickly hook on for my Spanish. I'll just go through them in order Spanish. I have a really fine wire leader. I have a gold treble hook. I just hook that through the back or the tail of that uh, mullet, that live bait fish. Uh, if I see the Spanish busting bait, I'll flip him over there. Normally they eat those pretty quick. They seem to really like the gold treble hooks. Gold treble hooks are harder to find than they used to be though. You might have to order those from uh, a, ta a tackle shop because they used to be everywhere in any little tackle shop. Harder to find now for some reason. So uh, then I have king rigs. Uh, I use three hook rig. There's a video on that one through the nose one through the back one through the anal vent That way when that king comes up grab him and I have my floats I've talked about those before uh, Floats back here in the back so I can just pull one of those out put it on with the king rig uh, tip on the float uh, Go ahead and open up your snap on the top. They're really hard to open So I just have them open that way all I gotta do is close them when I thread them on Make sure you know how to use those. There's videos on that online too. But that's my king rig. Put him back. And the key is to be as organized as you can. Things are going to get crazy out there. Um, things are going to move faster than you think. So the more organized you can be, the easier you can run through them. So Spanish rigs, king rigs, bring extras, sharks, bluefish, crazy stuff happens out there. Then I go to my, um, what is this? Oh, this will be my live bait bottom rig for like flounder maybe you know drum would pick this up it's uh basically just a one and a half ounce or two ounce weight about an eight inch section of leader and a seven or eight aught circle hook i'll hook that mullet or menhaden through the nose drop him down i don't use a wire leader because if there are a lot of black tip sharks lemon sharks bull sharks sharks in general at least they just bite through the mono and i don't have to fight them and spend a lot of time dealing with that or break them off and you got line they'll just bite that right off so that's nice if the big bull drum are, are right off the beach in big schools of menhaden i use a uh this is pretty big i use a 10 or an 11 aught circle hook it's really big i don't ever have to worry about those big bulls swallowing those or gut hooking them really short leader maybe nine inches 60 pound mono there are plenty, plenty of videos on how to make this rig and a three ounce egg sinker because i want to be able to drop that live menhaden right through the school bam catch my big drum and then i'm on to other fish uh that's a strategy thing you, you have to decide do i want to try to upgrade my fish now or try to catch all of them or and that's just something you'll have to decide is how do you want to go about trying to maximize your tournament length because it's a combination of five fish lengths king mackerel spanish mackerel redfish flounder and trout that includes gray trout so you want to catch as many of those five as you can and then maybe work on upgrading if there isn't any bait that's easily accessible because you don't want to spend a lot of time catching bait you'll have to go to artificials to jig up things out there so um, what i'll do is i'll have a big bucktail rigged up with Elias V it makes a great, great, great body. Uh, you'll get one of these in every captain's bag. Thank you very much, Elias, for that. But uh, it's a super durable body, great action, and flat out catches fish. And I'll put it on a one, one and a half, or even a two ounce jig head uh, just to get it down, to jig it up through those schools. And uh, a lot of different companies make bigger jigs. Uh, this is a boat up lure one. I've got some of Joe's in there too. Um, I, I always, I always put mine on a bucktail. Some people just use them naked, straight on there with no bucktail. But the extra action 
how can it how can it hurt? You might as well use it if you got it. So that if I don't get bait, that's what I'm jigging with. And even if I do get bait, if there's a lot of sharks or bluefish that's eating the bait, I'll switch over to uh, artificials to jig on the bottom for the flounder, the trout, and the redfish. Uh, another, let's say we can't get the mullet. What I'm mainly trolling around with is any small shiny, and it can be freshwater. Uh, Yuzuri makes some great glass minnow looking baits. Uh, Rapala makes some great glass minnow looking baits. The key I think is long and narrow, long and narrow. Shallow divers is what I use, mainly foot and a half, two feet, because I want to keep them up on top as I troll behind the kayak. I like if I'm trolling the kind that float. That way, if I stop, if I'm, you know, I stop for some reason, they don't sink, and I got to get them back up in the water column. So um, small and shiny. I use a 20-pound leader, about two feet of it, and I do use four carbon because those Spanish have great eyesight. So keep that in mind. If I'm uh, if I'm seeing Spanish hitting the top water or chasing bait, busting bait, Spanish or bluefish, I'll try to catch those because obviously I can score the Spanish. I can use the bluefish for big king mackerel bait. Uh, small spoons, uh, Hall River Tackle makes a great spoon. Um, Boat Up Lure now makes a great spoon. I look forward to trying that one here today. I mean, well, not today, but at the tournament this time to see how that goes. I'm sure it'll go great. Uh, again, small, shiny. They cast like a rocket. I put this normally on 10 pound test or 20 pound braid with about a three foot, 12 pound leader. The people are like, well, that's really light. It is really, it is light. But again, the further I can cast it, the faster uh, I can retrieve it. I don't know if that's weird, but I feel like with a lighter line and a little bit, uh, the big arbor and a lighter line, I don't have as much drag in the water. It moves faster through the water and again, that lighter line fluorocarbon leader, the Spanish can't see it as well. Just make sure you're casting the Spanish out there. This year, uh, we're not, we don't have albacore as a species. We may add that as a bonus fish next year. It's very tempting when you see those guys busting bait to cast over there, but I have to control myself because I really like to catch albacore, but can't score albacore, so have to move through that school. But if you, if you just want to have some fun out there for the heck of it, throw to those albacore you'll have a great day so that's a, just a quick tip on how we do it again make sure no hooks going no hooks coming back we don't see anybody uh doing the string jerk hook removal see you on the water